Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining us on this morning. We ask that you would hit that share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. My life is not my own. Your life is not your own. God bought us with the precious blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And since God did this awesome thing for us, the least we can do is bless him. The word bless means to be adored, to praise, to salute. And Pastor Davis is always telling us how to find the Greek words. But on, on this Sunday morning, I just want to bless, to salute, to praise the God of heavens for all the many good things that he has done for me and that he has done in our lives. Regardless of what we're going through right now, regardless of what uh, we've gone through in the past, God has blessed us. And we are still here today to give God praise, honor, and glory. So we just thank God on this morning. Our scripture comes from Psalm 103, 1 through 5, and then 20 through 22. And it reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then it tells you what his benefits are. Who forgives all your iniquity. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. In verse 20, it tells us who ought to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. Our song this morning is bless the Lord, O oh my soul, with all that was in me, I bless the Lord. Help us sing, bless the Lord. made a way he has made a 
every day. I will bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. And the most important thing that God has done for me God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity, Father God, to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for keeping us and blessing us. We thank you for your mercy and your grace for blessing us, Father God, and, and not holding us accountable, Father God, and in the midst of death for the sins that we've committed. But you've given us mercy, Father God, Justice didn't have its place because you've given us mercy, Lord. And for that, we're thankful. Lord, we thank you for your grace, your love, your tender loving care, Father God. For giving us, Father, what we did not deserve. For blessing us, Father God, when we were too mean to be right, too mean to do the right thing. Too selfish, Father God, to, to go about it your way. And Lord, you kept right on giving us your grace. And for that, we are thankful, Lord, and we bless your name. Lord, we thank you today for this privilege of digging into your word. We pray that you bless your word, Father God, that your word will fall on good soil, that your word will go forward, Father God. Men, women, boys, and girls will see themselves in your word, but most of all, that they will see you and glorify your name. We ask you, Father God, that your word will drive away every evil thought and every evil being. We pray, Father God, that your word will bind us up and keep us, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Amen and thank God. Will you bless him? Will you bless the Lord? Will you bless him? For he has done. He has done. He has done great things. He has done great things. God has. God has done great things. He has done great things. Bless him. Bless him. Bless his holy name. Bless him. Bless him. Bless his holy, his holy name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another Sunday morning. Thank you for another Lord's day. We thank God for another chance to honor him, to praise him, and to magnify his name. Amen. We're looking again at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 9 through 13 is where we are this morning. Luke chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. We look again at another temptation of the devil as he tempted Jesus to Christ. We're looking again at another, a third temptation that the devil tempts Jesus Christ. And we thank God for giving us this example through Christ. 
Luke chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. Luke chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. We want to thank our visitors for joining us again here at the New Beginning Church as we broadcast from our remote location. Thank you for being a part of our service today. Amen. Luke chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. When you found it, you will discover these words. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you and keep you. And in his hands, they shall bear, in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said, Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. I want to talk about the temptation of approval. The temptation of approval. The temptation of approval. When I grew up as a little boy on the playground, there was always a group of people that would find themselves surrounding a fight. If someone yelled, fight, fight, people would take a mad dash. They would run to that site. They would look on them and some of them would become a part of the urging on of the fight. Many times, two people would get into an argument and they would be standing there and they would be going back and forth, back and forth. And a third person that is not even involved in the argument would walk up and put a rock or a wood chip on one of the person's shoulder. Put the wood chip there and says... I dare you to knock it off. It was a temptation to get the fight started, to get the fight rolling, to get the fight on the road. This third person, this third person had nothing to do with the fight whatsoever. They was the one that was always the agitators that will find themselves in the middle of the huddle. They will run from the other side of the campus just to make sure they see what they called a good fight. So they would put the chip on a person's shoulder and say to the other one, I dare you to knock it off. This temptation was done so that one person would make an attempt to knock the chip off his shoulder and in turn, they would knock the person's shoulder in the process there would be some pushing going on. There would be some shoving going on until the fight came to a climax. It was the temptation of standing there, letting somebody else attempt to lock, knock a chip off your shoulder. It was the temptation of standing there with pride, saying that I'm not going to run, I'm not going to turn my back. I'm not going to allow you to push me and get away with it. Every now and then, grown folk act like little children on the playground. Every now and then, those of us who are, who are Christians, those of us who are born again, allow the devil to push us. I don't know if it's because we want the devil's approval or or is it because we want man's approval? Or is it because we lack God's approval? Here in this particular text, in Luke chapter 4, verses 9 through 13, we will find out that the devil is entering into his third temptation of Jesus. I told you before that James says, the, the, the epistle of James declares that there are three means by which temptation will come to any man. 
One mean is found in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, where he tempts Jesus with the stones. It's called the lust of the flesh. Jesus, Jesus had fast 40 days and he was afterwards, as Matthew says in Matthew chapter 3 and 4, Matthew says that he was afterward a hunger and the devil came to him and tempted him and he said to Jesus, Jesus, if you be the son of God, take these stones and make them bread. I said to you that that was a temptation of allegiance. It was a temptation of where Jesus placed his loyalty. It was a temptation of where Jesus placed his commitment to the superior one, God himself. I say to you that we ought not pledge our allegiance more to the flag than we pledge our allegiance to God. So the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Matthew says that the Holy Spirit moves upon Jesus. He drives Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Luke declares that the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness, being tempted 40 days by the devil. You see, the, the writers of the Gospels, they write from their own particular their own particular personality, their own particular background, and their own particular ethnic group. And they write to different people. And here we find Dr. Luke. And he is writing. And as he writes, he says that the Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness in verses 1 through 4 of Luke chapter 4 to be tempted by the devil. And the devil says, if you are the Son of God, in verse number 3, Command these stones to become bread. It is the lust of the flesh. It is when we are at our weakness. It is when our flesh is hungry that we are tempted. We are tempted by the devil in our flesh. You see, the devil doesn't tempt you in your pride. He doesn't tempt you in, in, in your eyes when you're weak in the flesh. But when you're weak in the flesh, he tempts you in the flesh. So Jesus, he says, now, first of all, you need to understand when the devil says, if you are the son of God, what he's really saying is, since you are the son of God. You see, the devil knows who you are. The devil knows who Jesus is. And what he says is, he says, since you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. He tempts him in the lusts of the flesh. James says that there's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. James says these are the three ways that the devil will always tempt you. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. When you look at Eve in the Garden of Eden, you will find out that the devil tempted her the same way, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. He says to her, go ahead and eat it. It's good. The, the Bible says when, when Eve saw it, it looked good. That was lust of the eye. It says when, when, when Eve ate up, she realized it was good for food that was left of the flesh. And then when Satan said to her that, that God knows that you will become a God like he is God, that is lust of the pride of life. I say to you this morning that any temptation that come upon you, it's going to come in one of these forms. And in verse 13 of Luke chapter 4, as we close out this message today, you will find out that this is true. For the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 13, that he had tempted him in every temptation. But it's just the beginning of temptations that the devil would tempt the Jesus himself, and it's just whatever you're going through, it's just the beginning of temptations in which the devil will tempt you. When you look at verse number nine, it is preceded by the smaller pericope found in Luke chapter four, verses five through eight, where he deals with the second temptation 
I need to pause and let you know when, when he deals with every temptation, Jesus deals with it through the word of God. Saints, if we're going to be victorious as we are tempted by the devil, we must recite the word. First of all, we must know the word. We must recite the word and we must live the word. It says, go ahead and turn this stone, turn this stone into bread. Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone. He moves to the second portion of this, this pericope and he says, go ahead and look at all the kingdoms of this world. He tempted him by lust of the eye. Go ahead, look at, I take, he took him up on an exceeding high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and he showed it to him in a moment of time. Quickly, I say to you today, young people, don't worry about getting rich quick. Work hard so you can, you'll be able to sustain what you get. Don't run out and get stuff that because everybody else got stuff. Make sure that you apply yourself. If your goal is to retire at age 30, let me tell you, you need to make some sacrifices today at your early age. When you look at the second portion of this pericope in Luke chapter, chapter 4, verses 5 through 8, he shows him the kingdoms of this world and he, he tempts him in the area of his authority. Now, here he is. He's going to give Jesus all the kingdoms of this world, and Jesus is God who already owns everything. Yes. Let me just say to you, sometimes you need to understand that whatever is being offered to you, God already got it for you. You just have to walk out what God has called you to do. Yes. He tempts him in the area of his authority. And see, the devil is the accuser of the brother. He is the one who slanders us. He is the one that will show us things in a moment's notice and show us how good things can be for us. It is, it is what he shows a young man when he tells him, if you sell these drugs, you can have these things. It is what he presents to a young girl when he says, if you sell your body for this or you turn off on God, turn God off in your life, you can have these things. The devil has a way of finding something by which he can tease us. There are no shortcuts to the blessings of God. When you look at this portion of the text, the devil is trying to show Jesus some shortcuts to all the kingdoms when Jesus himself is the only way to the father and only way to the kingdom as we will know it. Jesus is on his way to Calvary. Jesus is the only one who can die for us and present us spotless before the only wise God. Jesus is the only one can do it. And here it is in verses 5 through 8 that the devil is telling Jesus, I will give you all this stuff. I will give you this kingdom. But he's telling Jesus that he will give it to Jesus when Jesus already owns it. But he's trying to cut off the blessings of God. Whenever the devil offers you something, he, he offers you something that's pretty. He offers you something that's fine. He offers you something that, that looks good, tastes good, that, that, that builds up your pride. He offers you things, and then he offers it to you. And when you look at verse number eight, he says, he says uh, go down, if you bow down and worship me, if you bow down and worship me, in verses 5 through 8, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all these kingdoms. Jesus says in verse number 8, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. So the devil picks up Jesus' pattern by the time he gets to the, the third temptation. He noticed that when he, when he went through the first temptation and offered him the stones, to make the stone bread, Jesus quoted Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 3. When he offered him the second temptation in verses 5 through 8, Jesus quoted Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. How much more would it be a blessing 
if all of us who are in Christ would know the word well enough to quote it when the devil is on our tracks. Whenever devil, the devil shows up, we have to know the word in such a way until we quote it and put the devil on the run. You see, God will always honor his word. God will always honor his word. It's like a child whose parents have been telling him or her over and over and over and over again things that will be a blessing to you. And all of a sudden, when the rubber meets the road, all of a sudden when trouble hits, all of a sudden when things begin to rush and slide downhill, the parent hears that child quoting what he has been telling him or her all along. God is pleased. God is in the blessing business. But we have to know his word in such a way that when the devil shows up, we're ready to quote his word. When we look at chapter Luke chapter 4, verse number 9 through 13 is where we are today. Here it is again. The devil has picked up on Jesus' pattern. And he sees where Jesus knows the word. And so he attempts to confront Jesus with the word before Jesus quotes the word. <laughs> the devil knows. The devil knows. The devil knows the word. But the problem we see here is that when the devil quotes the word, he quotes it out of context. He quotes the word with the wrong motive. He quotes the word with some arterial motive in mind. Let me just say to you today, you need to know the word, but you need to know how and when to apply the word. And you need to know how and when to apply which word. Because Jesus applies the word and he applies it, the right word at the right time for the right situation. Verse number nine, he says, then, then he brought him to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the capital of religion. He brings him to Jerusalem where, where, where Jerusalem is well thought of and well looked upon. He brings him to Jerusalem where, where religion is at the top of the list. He brings him to Jerusalem. Let me just share with you, if you're spiritual and know that you are, the devil won't tip you with so much carnal stuff as he will with spiritual stuff. So many people have missed God because they thought they had that which is spiritual because they are super spiritual. Let me just say to those of you who are super spiritual today, if you're really, really super spiritual, let me tell you, God not only deals with the spiritual, but he deals with the practical. God not only God not only take that which is spiritual and works with your heart, he also take that which is practical and works with your mind. Look at what he says. He says, then he brings him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. The pinnacle is a high peak. Brings him and sets him on the pinnacle of the temple and says to him, him, Jesus, says to him, and see, some people, some people have messed up good things because the devil sets them high, and then they forget where they come from. Lord, Let me just say to you today, just because you're a supervisor today doesn't mean that you're always going to be there. Yes, right. It always, it always, it always tripped me out how supervisors will come to the floor and they would be very dogmatic. And they would take a person and then take the security guard and says, here's a box. Box up all of your stuff. It's time for you to get out of here. And they did it with no sensitivity. They cut men's throats. They, they used them as scapegoats. And, and they push young people and young and the old aside. And don't end up in corporate America when you're old. Once you get 50, they're looking to turn somebody away. They, they're looking to turn you off. Once you hit 50, you better have something saved because they're looking to turn you away. I say to young people all the time, make sure you save some now because a rainy day is coming. 
If you're looking forward to, to leaving on your own terms, you need to make sure you get your lesson before you get your lunch. Yes. If you're looking to, to leave on your own terms, you need to make sure that you do your homework. Make sure you present yourself as a good worker. Give them eight to five. Give, give, them, give them time of the day that you're supposed to give to them and give them your best. Yes. Because there's a supervisor that's waiting to flex his muscle. There's a supervisor that's waiting to, to show that he has authority to walk you out the building. And when they walk you out, they got security there. It always amazed me how it takes one person to bring you in. But it takes five people to sip, ship you out. <laughs> and you, you meet with one person, that's the immediate supervisor, and maybe you meet with a few peers and, and they bring you in and they pay you good money, they offer you great benefits. And you, you're the best thing since sliced bread. But two years, five years later, their opinion of you have changed. So they bring a box to your desk. And they set the box down. And when they set the box down, it's not two people that shows up. Five people that shows up at your desk. You got human resources. You got the benefits, benefits manager. You got the manager himself. You got your immediate supervisor. And then you got security walking right with you. And they all walk you out with no sensitivity. But it's always amazing to me. The same supervisor that walked you out, just two days later, they give him a box. <laughs> and they walk him out also. Right. And when we look at the text, when we look at the text, the devil is trying to fool Jesus. Right. First of all, he's trying to get Jesus killed <laughs> on the top of the pinnacle of a temple. Says to him, takes him up to the pinnacle of the temple and says to him, if you are the son of God, in other words, since you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. And here it goes. Here, here, here's the quote. He quotes him. He's, he, he quotes the word. He says, for he will give his angels charge concerning you. He will give his angels charge over you. King James declares that he will give his angels charge concerning you. New King James says, and he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. And in their hand, in whose hand? The angels' hands. And in the angels' hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. It says to him, he begins to quote Psalm 91. He quote, who quotes? The devil quotes Psalm 91. I told you the devil knows the word. The devil knows. The devil knows who you are. The devil knows what you stand for. The devil knows that he can get your attention with the word. But there's a problem here. I say that you don't drink the Kool-Aid because there's a problem here. The problem is the devil quotes the word of God. But he applies it the wrong way. He quotes Psalm 91, and Psalm 91 has been a victory verse, has been a victory number for many Christians all over this world. Psalm 91, he quotes it, the devil quotes it, but first of all, he quotes it with the wrong motive. Secondly, he quotes it out of turn, he quotes it with the wrong application. The devil quotes the word to Jesus himself. Now he quotes the word to the word. He quotes the word where John says, in the beginning was the word, in the beginning was the word of God, and the word became flesh in verse number 14 of John chapter 1. Mm -hmm. So he quotes the word to Jesus. Let me just tell you, everybody that quotes the word doesn't have the right motive. Everybody who quotes the word is not God's child. Everybody who quotes the word is not walking with the Lord. Anybody can quote the word. That's why I told you, you need to make sure when you quote the word, you apply the word in the right place, in the right content for the right situation. Amen. So the devil quotes the word to Jesus. He says, go ahead and jump. <laughs> he says, go and jump because you know 
If you, in other words, since you are the son of God, God will give his angels charge over you. He will give his angel protection and God has promised that he will protect you and he will keep you. Mm -hmm. Let me just say to you today, sometime God, God will allow the devil. The devil will recite God's promises to you. Mm -hmm. it's, it is the picture of a young girl who's desperate for love. She's desperate for marriage. She, she says she's 30 now and, and because she's 30, she, she knows that her time is running out. So the devil sends some, send some smooth-talking brother and tells her that the Lord told me to tell you that I'm the one. Mm -hmm. Let me just say to you today, sister, and to you, brother, if the Lord hadn't told you, then you keep on stepping. Yes. Because God doesn't have to send a telegraph to get to you. God doesn't have to send an email. He doesn't have to send a smooth-talking woman or a smooth-talking brother to get to you. And God, God doesn't have to use a sassy woman to get to you, young man. It is the picture. It is the picture of, 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 of Proverbs chapter 7, where this woman talks to this young man. The man, the writer says, I looked out the casement of my window, and what did I see? I saw a young man walking the street, and this young man was void of understanding. He was void of understanding. How do you know he was void of understanding? Because he stopped and he talked to a married woman. And as he talked, this young man, as he talked to this married woman, she had him to know that I have laid my bed out for you. And she didn't hide it from him. She was a married woman. She says, my husband is on a far journey. Mm -hmm. He's not coming back anytime soon. He, he, she, she says to him that I prepared my tapery for you. I prepared my household for you. You see, a lot of time the devil will make you feel special. A lot of time the devil will send you something to you, just your style. It, he, she was just his shape. She had the right voice. She had the smoothness. And the Bible said that this woman has caused many great men to fall. The devil knows what you like. The devil knows what you're looking for. The devil knows what's getting next to you. The devil knows what, you, what you've been longing for. But don't go for the counterfeit. Here we have in, in Luke chapter 4. Verses 9 through 13, Jesus is in the wilderness. He's hungry, so he offers him bread through the stones. <laughs> Jesus is, is, is in the wilderness, and he, he's spending some time alone with God, so he offers him the kingdoms of the world. And finally, he offers him, he says, if you, if you bow down, I, I will give you the kingdoms of the world. And then finally, he offers him the pride of life by saying, go ahead and jump and you have some bragging rights. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead and jump because your word says, your word says that, that, that he will give his angels charge over you to keep you and to hold you up. <laughs> Lest you dash your foot against the stone. He will give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up. It is the picture. It is the picture of, of one, who, who is, one who is walking through this life during the pandemic. It is the picture of one who refused to cover his or her face and nose with a mask. Said, oh, God is going to take care of me. God is going to protect me. But let me just share with you today, my dears, I keep my distance because God is good. Yes. I, I, I cover my face and my nose with a mask because God is to be worshipped. God is to be praised. God is to be trusted, but he is not to be tempted. Yes. Let's look at what it says. Jesus says, and it has been said. In other words, it's been written. And Jesus quote Deuteronomy 6 and 16. And when he quotes Deuteronomy 6 and 16, he also applies it again by looking at Exodus chapter 17. And Jesus says, it is written. Again, he says, it is written. When he says, it has been said, what Jesus is saying, it has been written. I want to stop to tell you right now, when the devil used scripture, you need a scripture to counteract what the devil uses. Yes. 
Because the devil doesn't mean you well. The devil is not out to, to give you sipping coffee and, and sipping tea for you to live long lives. He only gives you tea, Kool-Aid, and sips of coffee just for a momentary pleasure. I want to say to you today, don't give up eternity. Don't give up rewards in heaven. Don't give up your life for a moment of excitement from the devil. He says, he says, and Jesus says to him, it has been said, in other words, it has been written. It has been written, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. According to Deuteronomy 6, 16, you see, Jesus didn't have the New Testament because the New Testament was being fulfilled as Jesus walked. So Jesus had to apply the Old Testament to remind the devil why Jesus has come. And he reminds the devil of what God has already said. And today, if we are walking with the Lord, if we love the Lord, if we are quoting the scripture, we need to know that the scripture fits certain situations. It is the picture. It is the picture of one that's saying, I am binding and loosening. Binding and loosening. And people use this, this, this phrase, binding and loosening, when it comes to healing and calling for God's righteousness and calling for God's miracles. But this binding and loosening is found in Matthew chapter 16, where Jesus says that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He was talking to Peter, the one who is the rock. Petros, and he's saying to Peter, Peter, as you set up my church, whatever comes up out of your bowels, whatever comes up from you, I will bind that which is bound on earth in heaven. I will loose that which is loosed on earth in heaven. So he says, he says that when we use the scripture, we need to know the content. We need to know the purpose. We need to have the right motive. And we need to apply the scripture in the right place. Jesus says, you should not tempt the Lord your God. This temptation is all about us. This temptation says to us that, that we ought to keep our distance. We ought to wear our masks. We, we ought to make sure that we carry ourselves in such a way that we can be healthy Amen. and we can walk another day. What he does here to Jesus, he tempts Jesus Again, to short circuit Calvary. He tempts Jesus to take a shortcut through Calvary. He tries to get Jesus killed on the pinnacle of the temple. He tries to tell Jesus, go on and jump. And let me just say to you, God has already worked out a plan for Jesus and he's worked out a plan for you. You don't have to let the devil tempt you. You don't have to wait till the devil gets you to a point for you to go ahead and jump. During this market crash, during this pandemic, there are people who are committing suicide in the midst of all that's going on. I just stopped by to tell you, don't jump. I just want to tell you, don't, don't steal. I, I want to tell you, don't do crazy stuff just because you don't see a way out. Jesus has, God has a way out for you. Somebody is struggling right now with the marriage. Somebody is struggling right now with a sickness. Somebody is struggling right now to, to keep it all together. Let me tell you, don't jump. Let me tell you, don't take too many pills. Don't, let me tell you, don't overdose. Let me tell you, don't get caught up on drugs. Let me tell you, don't drink too much because God has a way out. Amen. <laughs> don't jump. <laughs> See, jumping for some of us is saying the wrong thing back to the boss. Jumping for some of us is, is keeping silent when we ought to be speaking up. Jumping for some of us is, is doing things that is out of our character to, 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 get, to get to another means. Let me tell you, don't jump. Amen. Hang in there. God is on the way. Hang in there. God is present. Hang in there. God is around the corner. Hang in there. This is a faith walk. Hang in there. Don't give up. Amen. Don't say the wrong thing. Don't act the wrong way. Don't use the wrong motivation. Don't use the wrong mannerism. It is a test of your approval from God. People are going to always test you. And they're going to test you. If you say you're anointed, they're going to put you to the test. Yes. 
If you say you're a Christian, they're going to put you to the test to see if you're really living for Christ. It, it, it's a test of your approval. Many times, we need to understand that God has approved us. And man and the devil will always test our approval. Don't get caught up in pride. This test today that we're talking about is a test of pride. Young people are proud, prideful. Old people have pride. Don't let your pride wreck your life. The word brought means that the devil brought him, led him, and, and kept him <laughs> and, and, and beat him into the wilderness. This word dash, lest you dash your foot against the stone. This word is twofold. First of all, it's talking about Jesus is up on a high pinnacle. And this high pinnacle is up above the temple. He has taken him up above the temple. And this temple is made of stone. And the devil acts like he, he tries to paint a picture that he's really concerned about Jesus. He says to Jesus, it, it is written. And because it is written, Jesus, you ought to go and jump. And as you jump, you know that the angels will take charge over you. Don't, don't dash, don't, don't, don't catch your foot on the stone on your way down. The second thing he's talking about when he says, unless you dash your foot against the, throne, the stone, he's talking about Moses when he was in the wilderness. You see, Moses was in the wilderness, and now Jesus is in the wilderness. Moses is in the wilderness, and when Moses was in the wilderness, God said to Moses, speak to the rock. And when he said to Moses, speak to the rock, out of, out of Moses' anger, out of Moses' selfishness, out of Moses' fatigue, out of Moses' frustration, he didn't speak to the rock, he struck the rock. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you, don't get so frustrated. Leaders, don't get so frustrated until you do it your way and not God's way. You got to make sure you do it God's way. And when you do it God's way, do it God's way every time. We are here to put our trust in God. We are not here to tempt God. Don't let the devil get you to a point where you tempt God. Go ahead and do crazy stuff. Go ahead and go and, and say crazy stuff. Go ahead and be with crazy people. Don't let the devil tempt you. There are some people that are being tested during this election. And they've come to the point where, where look, at, look at how the devil plays even into politics. They come to a point where I don't want Biden and I don't want Trump. So I'm going to waste, I'm going to waste my vote on somebody else. And then I am not going to vote. Look at the devil, how he tempts us. I'm not going to vote because I don't like her, his running mate. I'm not going to vote because, you know, I've, I've had enough of him. I've had enough of 50 minus 5. I, I've had enough of him, but I don't like them either. The devil has a way of tempting us. I say to you, I say to you, we can't afford another four years. I say to you, we can't afford it. If you let the devil tempt you to cast your vote for anybody else, if you let the devil tempt you to not vote at all, if you let the devil tempt you to stay at home, you're tempting God. I say to you today that people have lost their lives. People have lost their, their way. People have given blood, sweat, and tears just for you to be able to cast one vote. Don't let the devil tempt you. Don't let the devil frustrate you. <laughs> Don't let the devil question your allegiance. Don't let the devil question and tempt you in the area of your authority. Don't let the devil tempt you in the area of God's approval. God has approved you. And don't let folk tempt you. You trust God. And when you trust God, you don't tempt God. Finally, in verse number 13, he says, Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. He departed. The devil departed. In, 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 in other version, it says that the devil left him for a season. I want to tell you today, you may know the word, you may quote the word, 
But at the end of the day, you need to understand one thing and one thing really well. The devil leaving you is just for our tomb time. Mm. I want to say to you, I want to say, say to you today that the devil is leaving you just for a moment. Don't think you got it over on the devil. Don't think the devil has left you alone. Just because you're holy, just because you're born again, just because you put the devil on the run and you've told the devil to get behind you, don't think the devil is gone for long. The text declares he left Jesus for opportune time. He, he left Jesus for another chance of opportunity. He left Jesus just for a season. I want to tell you, the devil is coming back again. The devil is coming to trip you up again. The devil is coming to tempt you again. The devil, the devil is going to test your allegiance again. The devil is going to test your authority again. And the devil is going to test your approval again. The devil is coming back. But the good news today is Jesus is coming back. <laughs> I don't have to worry about the devil and his coming back. I just have to walk in the word. I have to live the word. I have to sustain myself in the word. I have to saturate myself with the word because I know the devil is around the corner. I know the devil is knocking on the door. I know the devil is trying to kick the door down. I know the devil is trying to tempt me. But let me just share with you, the devil doesn't have a chance because not only is the devil coming back, Jesus is coming back. What Jesus you talking about? I'm talking about the Son of God. Jesus the Christ who died on a skull of hill called Calvary. Jesus the Christ is one that they lay in a barber tomb. Jesus the Christ the one they rose from the dead. He rose with all power. He's coming back again. Amen. I don't care about the devil coming back as long as I got Jesus. I got Jesus and that's enough. I got Jesus and that's enough. Because one of these days, Paul says it like this, that one of these days at the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise. Those of us who have this life to hope that Jesus died for our sin. Jesus was buried in a barber tomb. He rose from the dead. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. That Jesus is coming back again. Amen. He's coming to get a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Behold, Paul says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all die. But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. This corruption will put on incorruption. This mortal will put on immortality. We're going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Those of who, who believe, those of us who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for our sins, he rose from the dead. Jesus is coming back to get us one day. And we're going to glorify his name until he gets back. And once he comes to get us again, we will rejoice forevermore on the other side. Amen. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to trust Jesus as your personal Lord and your personal Savior. It is Jesus who has shown us how to get rid of temptation of allegiance how to get rid of temptation of authority and how to get rid of the temptation of approval. God has approved us through Jesus the Christ. If you haven't been approved, if you don't know Jesus in the departing of your sin, you need to get to know him. The door is open. The invitation is extended. If you want to go to heaven when you die, you can be saved right here, right now. If you want power through the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. The door of the church is open. Will you receive Jesus as your personal Savior? Will you come to him today? You can do that by just repeating after me. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and just repeat this simple prayer and then invite Jesus into your life. Will you join me? Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. 
Now come into my life. Make me a new creature. Thank you for saving my soul. If you prayed this prayer, we believe that you're born again and that you're on the way to heaven when you die. We pray in the name of Jesus for he is the one that gives us power. He is the one that gives us connection to God. We thank God for Jesus. You prayed that prayer. Now you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Allow the Spirit to lead you, guide you, and protect you. Allow the Spirit of God to direct you into all truth. There may be someone who's saved and know that you are, but for some reason or the other, you're not in church. You don't have a church home. I recommend this one, where Jesus is the center of attention where Jesus is the main attraction, where Jesus is the captain of the ship. You can get to know him through the New Beginning Church. I submit to you the New Beginning Church where you can be a part of the family of faith. If you would like to join or become a part of the New Beginning Church, you can do so by inboxing me. Let me know by way of Zoom or by way of Facebook Live that you you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to have you. And we look forward to rejoicing with you. If you've received Christ or if you've joined our church, we look forward to a great time in the Lord for you and with you. So please inbox us and let, you, let us know if you need prayer. We'll be glad to pray with you. And there are some visitors and family members as well as members of the church that are inboxing, going to our website at NBC Souls, NBC Souls, and, and sending a message saying, pray for me. We believe that God answers prayer. Please join us at the New Beginning Church, and we will be praying, praying for you. It is now offering time. It is now time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can give to the New Beginning Church in three forms. First of all, you can give by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. You can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle email is lifting.jesus. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com or you can give by mailing your offering and your tithes in to P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 that's P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 thank you so much for being a part of our service today Thank you for joining us by way of our 1045 service. You can join us every Sunday morning on Zoom, on, on Facebook Live for our 9 a.m. service, our Sunday school service. You can join us at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school service every Sunday morning. And please join us on Wednesday night for our Bible study at 7.20 p.m. Bible study at 7.20 p.m. Again, thank you so much for joining us, for being a part of this service for being a part of our Sunday school service and thank you for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Thank those of you who have been giving by way of Zoom, have been giving by way of Cash App, been giving by way of Zelle, and have been mailing in your offering. Thank you so much. We do not take it for granted. Thank you for loving your church and being visitors who love the New Beginning Church. Visitors have been mailing in our offerings as well and been giving to our church and we just want to say thank you thank you for being a part of this service thank you for the ongoing fellowship that we have one to the other please hit the share button share it with your friends and as we begin on on sunday at 9 a.m and sunday at 10 45 hit the the share button start a a watch party and after we've gone here today please ma'am please sir start your your watch party we're looking to be together on tuesday 
night for our prayer time together by way of our our Zoom. We're going to have our Zoom meeting as well as our prayer time together this this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Please join us this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, for our prayer time together. We're trying all kind of ways to stay in touch and to stay tuned and to be a good church for the Lord. God is looking for a church without a spot or ramp. We're at the New Beginning Church. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. God, we bless your name. We thank you, Father God, for being able to stand in the temptation. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us, Father God. Regardless if we're tempted by our allegiance, if we're tempted by our authority, or we're tempted by our approval, Lord, we thank you for being the one who keeps us. Lord, we ask you to keep this audience now. Bless us to walk with you and bless us to be about your business. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only true, the only living God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we get together again, let us all say amen and amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.